Hi, I want to give my welcome to you all today. I'm really sorry I can't be with you. I've got a really complex Christmas like I guess a lot of people do. Family returning from overseas and very small windows of opportunity to catch up with people today. So I just wish you all the best as you spend time with each other and then go and spend time with families and friends as well. It's a really blessed, beautiful time of the year and I love it. I love the warmth of the season and I love all the memories I've made over the years as well. Every time I get to Christmas, it's like a bit of a treasure chest, really. I like being able to unpack all the different years and the different places I've lived and the different spaces and people that I've been with uh, during Christmas. I realise there's just a lot of treasure to be um, enjoyed and to reflect on. I remember Christmas when I was really young with my grandparents. I remember a Christmas spent with uh, Chinese friends. I remember a Chris Christmas spent with uh, a Japanese friend as well. And over the years, um, parents who've now gone and brothers and sisters when they were little and now they're all kind of grown up. And I guess every year I just look for, is there going to be a moment when Christmas will become somehow personalized and fresh and new and I'll discover something just um, unique and mysterious and wonderful about it again. Well, I've had one of those this year and I know I've shared this in a couple of groups already, but it's a story that I really, I really love and I think I'll be telling it for a lot of years to come. It's a day that um, the nature of the incarnation, the freshness of the presence of Jesus, God with skin on, just became uh, really real to me again. It's something I've known for a long time. Now why is Jesus so important? Because it's very difficult to understand the heart and the nature and the feelings of an intangible, invisible God. And so in the presence of Christ, in the presence of Jesus, uh, there's such a great opportunity to have a deep sense of the flesh and the words and the voice and the actions of God on earth. Beautiful moment in John's Gospel, chapter 1, where we get this image of, you know, God has come to, to pitch his tent among us. It's like God has moved into our camping area, he's moved in to our campsite, and uh, we get to know him and we meet him. That's why I love the Gospels. So this year for me, it, were, it started out so simply, and yet it's had such a profound effect on me. I was in my office talking to someone who'd gone through a pretty difficult marriage, an end of marriage, and uh, spending some intense time in conversation and prayer, and there was a knock on the door, which I answered briefly. There was a lady there that I've got to know over the last year. She lives locally, and we've spent a bit of time just catching up and working out a few things with, with health and maintenance of a yard and a whole range of things really. Anyway, she said, look, I didn't want to disturb you, but I saw your son at the front and uh, my cat's dying. So I said to her, look, I, I can't talk now. I've got somebody with me, but if it's okay, I'll drop around later on. She was happy for that. So I cruised around to her place a bit later in the afternoon and we stood out in the backyard and she explained to me uh, the story of the cat. She's had this cat for about 18 years. The cat has now passed away. And on this day, she knew that that date was getting really close and she probably would have to have it put down either later that afternoon or early the next day. And she was really distressed about it because over those 18 years, the cat was like her constant companion. When things were wonderful, the cat was there. When things were difficult and hard, the cat was there. When she moved from place to place, the cat went with her. When a grandson was born, well, the cat was part of her family and all of that. And when she had really bad news about the death of her son, uh, the cat was with her in all of that as well. And so as she um, spent time thinking about the near end of her cat, she just realised how important this little animal had been to her. A little bit of joy, a little bit of hope, a little bit of um, presence and, and friendship and, and uh, just love really. So we stood in the backyard hearing all these different stories about the cat and the cat was over by the fence looking not that well. It was pretty scrawny and skinny and looking like it wasn't long for this world really, but still still there and still breathing. I met a daughter. Uh, her daughter came out. She'd been to visit. Her daughter said, in fact, the first thing her daughter said to me was, look, I'm not a, not a believing kind of person. I said, look, that's okay. I'm just really wanting to pray with your mum and think about this cat. Would you like to come and stand with us? And she was really happy to do that. So she came and put her arms around her mum. And, and we stood there, our arms around each other, and the cat's over by the fence. And um, then uh, the lady said, oh, don't worry about the tomato plant. Uh, actually, it wasn't a tomato plant. It's a little marijuana growing in a pot by the side of the garden. 
So I stood there in the sun thinking, what a bizarre thing to do. Here I am, standing with a lady who just wants to honour her dying cat of 18 years, standing with a daughter who clearly says, look, I'm not a believing person, but really happy to stand there. And we've all got our arms around each other and I just launch into prayer. Spend a couple of minutes just giving God thanks for the life of the cat and for all the things that cat has grown to mean. Praying for this lady as she gets ready for grief and for loss and what it means out the other side of the cat's demise and the cat's going. Giving God thanks for creation, for the garden, for the warmth of the air. Giving God thanks for the daughter who is there giving support at this stage as well. As I got to the final Amen, it just dawned on me. This is why Christmas is so important. This is what God with skin on, the incarnation, God pitching his tent among us, this is why it is so crucial. Because God doesn't need a temple. God doesn't need to be in anywhere particularly special. And there in that little street in Mornington, I realised, yeah, God is here. Whenever two or three gather, God is in their midst. It just needs someone to, um, to pause and to think and to give voice and thanks.